Good afternoon as we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Let's all stand and join in singing our gathering song, number 479, Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days, number 479. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come together to begin this Lenten journey, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, that through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. 
Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the product of the soil which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the crypt scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Praise to you. does not live on bread alone, 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took, from, then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone you shall serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Our readings today speak of hope. Now I know maybe you're thinking that that's not necessarily true. After all, our first reading recalls how the Israelites, the people of God, were enslaved. And our gospel talks about how Jesus was tempted. So how can we call these readings hopeful? I think we first have to look at what hope is. I think oftentimes, maybe in a common sense, we think hope is kind of a passive emotion of awaiting. But I think there's much more, especially when we refer to Christian hope. It gives us a way to live, an active way to live. I hope that you all have had people in your life that have been models and inspirations of what it means to live in hope. And I was thinking of an experience that I had when I was in my second year of college seminary. And we were doing uh, service hours. And so we organized a group to go um, to work with the Missionaries of Charity, the order that was started by Mother Teresa. This was in Indianapolis. And oftentimes they have their convents located in really the roughest neighborhoods, the poorest of neighborhoods. And in Indianapolis, that was no exception. And so they put us together with a man named Mark, and they were excited for us. And they told us that this would be a great day for us. And it was certainly an eye-opening experience, because Mark led us around the city, not far from where we traveled on a regular basis. And we would simply, you know, turn a corner and go down a long road, and there would be a city of people living homeless, intense. We did that at three or four different stops. And as we did, we delivered care packages. We prayed with them. And we also witnessed this man, Mark, who went up to each and every person. And even, you know, with all that goes on, with all that those people were going through, whatever afflictions and difficulties they were affected with, Mark saw them as people, and he loved them. He prayed with every single one of them and always talked about Christ. Afterwards, we had the opportunity to sit and talk with Mark. He had a remarkable story, a story of conversion. He talked about how when he was a young man, still in high school, that he dropped out. He got involved with drugs and was addicted and enslaved by that for so many years. He could never hold a job. He himself was homeless for a period. 
and he pretty much isolated himself from everyone that he had known, his family and his friends. And it's in that moment that he had a conversion, that he desired to give himself to Christ. And though his life wasn't necessarily easy after that, he made a change, small steps, but centered around living for and with Christ. He got a job, a small apartment, and from that day forward, he sought to do everything that he could to serve the people that he had at one time lived with, to serve the people who held many of the same burdens that he did. Ark was a man of hope, and it wasn't because he was perfect. He was very open and honest about his past struggles and even his current struggles. But the thing about him was that even with those burdens in his life, he focused more on the strength that Christ would give him. He trusted in that, and he lived in that hope. Our readings today give us hope, and like Mark, we don't have hope because we are perfect. No, we have hope because we live in the Lord. In that first reading, we hear of the great enslavement of the Israelites in Egypt, their enslavement to the world. But we also know and we hear how God heard their cry. Even after his people had abandoned him time and time again, even as as they grew comfortable in Egypt, he heard them and he sought them. The Lord allowed them to see the error in their ways. In other words, to see the fruit of how they were living, the physical enslavement, but certainly the spiritual enslavement. And even through the journey, through the journey through the desert, he allowed them to falter time and time again because of their own sins, their own attachment to that enslavement that they once knew. And it isn't until the Israelites realize that there is freedom and there is fulfillment in giving ourselves to God, and that what they leave behind is nothing compared to that. It's only until they realize that they begin to actually make progress. In our gospel today, we hear another journey into the desert. Jesus is tempted with three distinct temptations. And on one level, we can read this story and think that these temptations are not really what we go through. After all, I doubt that any of us have been tempted to try to turn bread from stones. But when we look at the temptations, I think we see that they're the temptations that we go through all the time, day in and day out. In that first temptation, we see Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the scripture says something we should relate to. The devil came to him when he was hungry. So oftentimes temptation comes to us when we don't feel perfect, when we feel tired, when we feel hungry, when we feel a longing for something. That's when temptation can strike. That's when he offers us something that we think is more desirable. That second temptation, the devil shows Jesus all the riches that he could have if only he would bow down to him. Once again, maybe we don't feel the same way, that this is an option for us or relatable. But it relates to what the Israelites did time and time again. They bowed down to the ways of the world. And when we look at ourselves with a little self-reflection, we know we do the same thing that we bow down to the ways of the world and we don't bow down to God. It's the very same temptation Christ went through. And finally, the devil tempts Jesus to doubt God, to throw himself off the wall. How often in our lives have we said to ourselves that certainly God could help me if I was a better person or if I could have more faith then I wouldn't have those doubts. The temptation here is to think to ourselves that God has not shown himself and that we need some extraordinary proof in our life. 
And certainly at times of doubt, we should not be afraid to go to God and confess that to him and look for guidance. But we have all been blessed with the gift of faith, even if we doubt at times. Our Lord was tempted to doubt, to deny what he knew. These are the temptation Christ goes through. And what does this all mean for us? Is it a story to give us a strategy to overcome temptation? Yes, but I think it's even more about the humanity and the love of our Lord. This story helps us to see that our Lord subjected himself to the very same things that we go through each and every day. With temptations of doubt, with turning away from God, with giving in to our desires. But he perseveres. He remains faithful so that we can have hope. We can have hope in knowing that Jesus has conquered sin and temptation. We have hope in knowing that he did it for us. And this is not that false hope that says we are perfect or we rely on our own perfection. But it's a hope like the Israelites. It's a hope like that of Marx. That we we are confronted with our own weaknesses when we realize that we have gone astray. We don't settle. We strive for more. We don't live in that weakness, but we live in the strength of our Lord's victory. Our Lord not only shows us this path, but he is truly the way. What a beautiful way to begin this Lenten journey, season of Lent, which is about looking at our lives and seeing where we can do better. During this season, we strive to put God at the center of our lives, where he should be. We take time to rid ourselves of those things that have gotten in the way. It can be a hard task to accomplish. In fact, for us, it's an impossible task. We share in the struggle of sin and temptation, the struggle to remain faithful in the face of temptation. But we also share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with hope, we lift up our prayers and needs this day. For the church during this Lenten season, 
May the Lord strengthen us through our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and a spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray. For the safety of our military, police, firefighters, and health care workers, let us pray. For our catechumens, may they always remember this day of their election and be grateful for the blessings they have received from heaven. And for their godparents, may they be living examples of the gospel. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sebastian Petrillo, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Together, let us pray our prayer for vocations. Almighty Father, you have created us for some death purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for us in this life and to respond with Six, deep within, number 486. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hem of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. body of Christ. Number 489, Merciful God. Number 489. and guide us, merciful God, light when the shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us, merciful God, people who hunger for you. 
surely you alone can save us. You pay our price with precious blood. Reaching through your great compassion, you lift up your people with love. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. Light when the shadows of life cloud our you. Feed us and guide us. Merciful God, people who hunger for you. Surely you alone uphold us. You give us strength for all our needs. Shielding with a Father's favor, you bless us with pardon and peace. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. Light when the shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. Surely you alone can heal us. Yours is the will to make us whole. Soothing with a mother's kindness, the contrite of heart you console. Feed us and shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us, merciful God, people who hunger for you. Surely you alone can free us. You break the bonds of guilt and sin. Bracing till we walk uprightly, you bolster our hope once again. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. Light when the shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us. God, people who hunger for you. Surely you alone refine us. You give us grace for lives made new. Forging through your fire and radiance, a sacrifice worth for you. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. Light when the shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us, merciful God. People who hunger for you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, 
and charity strengthen. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. The topic for this Thursday's RCIA class is Morality, the Commandments, Love of God. All are welcome to attend. Lenten prayer guides are available at the church doors for you to use as reflections during Lent. Please take one. Youth group flower sale forms are now available at the church doors. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. A bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Number 493, change our hearts. Number 493.